Good afternoon, everybody. Christine Barconi here in the NBC4I Streaming Center, joined by Ohio Secretary of State Frank LaRose. And last time we talked, we talked about the maps that were supposed to be done. They were submitted, but the Supreme Court has now deemed a set of them unconstitutional. So we're kind of back to the drawing board. People have been hired to come on to do these maps, but your role is to get us a primary election, and that's not going to happen in May. Now, is it to the best of your knowledge? Well, it's still possible. And uh, and here's the, the best way to understand this. Of course, I wear two hats, uh, wear many hats, but in this context, I wear two, the, the chief elections officer for the state of Ohio to work with all 88 boards to make sure that they're ready to run another fair and honest election and also serve as a member of the redistricting commission. So we're, we're staying quite busy. But my job is to make sure that the boards of elections are ready for whatever, uh, and there's really just a handful of different scenarios that could come up. Uh, one of them is that we run a complete election on May 3rd, meaning including all of the uh, uh, all of the races. Uh, and the only way that that happens is that if the federal court were to intervene very quickly at this point, they could order that those February 24th maps that have been invalidated by the Ohio Supreme Court be used uh, for this election if that's what the federal court chooses to do. I've maintained our boards of elections in a state of readiness to be able to do that. But pretty soon, we're going to have to get the boards working on uh, removing those state legislative races from the ballot so that they can run the rest of the election on May 3rd. Uh, we will, that'll be the, the next step if, uh, if that's necessary. And then, of course, the General Assembly or the court could change the date of the election. But bottom line is this, whether the election is held on May 3rd, uh, whether the election is held as two separate primaries, one in May and one in August, or whether the whole thing is moved until June, Ohioans are going to have the same accessible and honest election that they always have because, Christine, those are two things that we're never going to cut corners on, accessibility and integrity. We're going to make sure that Ohioans that are registered to vote can vote and that it's convenient for them to vote. We're also going to make sure that we prevent fraud and keep it honest because that's what we do. And it's the work of hundreds of bipartisan elections officials around the state that make that happen. And they've been putting in some late nights and some early mornings and some weekend hours to do just that. I was kind of following up uh, my next question. You, you you touched on it a little bit. Does the court, do you think, have the power to move the primary date? Now, generally, it's always, it's the, the job of the General Assembly right behind you to uh, set that date. But now, do you think the court has the power to set a date and to move it? The Ohio Supreme Court certainly does not. What the state law says is that a no government official shall cause the time, place, or manner of the election to be changed other than the General Assembly. Uh, and so in state government, that power exists exclusively with 33 representatives and or 33 uh, senators and 99 representatives. It's up to the men and women of the General Assembly to make that choice. Now, uh, the federal court does have the ability to do that. At least that's what the the, the lawyers have told me that the federal court would have the ability to change the date of the election if they chose to do so. And as you know, there's a variety of different lawsuits going on right now. In fact, last I checked, we're involved in or monitoring uh, nine lawsuits at this time. Mm -hmm. uh, there's one in the federal court that has asked, there are a group of plaintiffs that have asked the federal court to, uh, uh, to allow the redistricting commission, or to, sorry, rather to allow us to direct the boards of elections to go forward with those maps that were drawn on February 24th. So that's one of the possibilities. Do you have a message to your party? Um, obviously, they're you know in control at the state house. Do you have a message to your party about what needs to happen to make sure we have a primary election this spring? Well, it's not not, that, not necessarily a message to my party. Mm -hmm. um, uh, although uh, you know there are a lot of good Republicans involved in this process, uh, the. The work of elections administration is entirely bipartisan, uh, just like the work of the redistricting commission is, is bipartisan. And so it's Republicans and Democrats who make sure that we're ready to have this election. Um, to, to members of my party, I know there's a great deal of disappointment uh, from what has happened with the Ohio Supreme Court. I share that disappointment. In fact, uh, you know, I believe that the Ohio Supreme Court has told us now three separate times, draw more Democratic districts, draw more Democratic districts. I don't believe that the things that they've ordered us to do are anywhere in the Constitution. I think that the court majority has gotten it wrong. I think if you want to see the legal justification of that, look at the minority opinion that was written by uh, Justice Kennedy, Justice French, and just, uh, ju Justice uh, DeWine, and Justice Fisher, um, and, uh, and take a look at, at what they wrote. 
because at this point, the Ohio Supreme Court has ordered us to gerrymander. I mean, that, that, that is the definition of gerrymandering is when you sit down and draw districts in such a way that they aid one party over another. And the court has now three times said, you've got to draw more democratic districts. Now they've even told us that we have to hire outside map makers. And, you know, again, none of this is anywhere in the constitution, but I don't get to decide what is constitutional and what is not. We believe in rule of law. Even when we think the court gets it wrong, we, we follow the legal, uh, you know, uh, orders from the court. And, and that's exactly what we're doing right now. Let's actually talk about the, the the cost of this, because this is costing boards of elections. It's costing the state of Ohio taxpayers. Well, it all boils down to taxpayers paying for all of this. I, I mean, what is your take on that? Because, of course, now we've got to hire an outside group as well. My take on that is that a group of outside activists have been filing lawsuits in the state of Ohio to try to get something done that benefits themselves. And uh, I think that this goes up to people like Eric Holder, uh, who are really pulling the strings of all of these efforts. And, uh, you know, some of these uh, Democratic groups that continuously file, file, file these lawsuits in an attempt uh, to try to get what, uh, what they want in the courts because they can't get it uh, in the redistricting commission or through the General Assembly. And so, uh, you know, it's problematic. And, and because of all of these protracted legal fights, unnecessary legal fights that have been foisted on the people of Ohio by these activist groups, we are certainly spending money on the commission, and it could end up costing us money uh, in elections administration as well. Uh, the, the, the May primary, what, what's a, another realistic date that you think could happen um, at this point if the federal court doesn't overturn? Uh, what's, what's a good realistic date or month or weeks or what, what are you thinking about that? Yeah, so here are the uh, different outcomes, uh, as we can see it, uh, Christine. Uh, one is that the federal court would act nearly immediately. It would have to be uh, really today or, or in the next day or two. Uh, the federal court could say, you may use the third set of maps to run this election. If that's the case, our boards of elections are ready to go. Again, I pushed pause last Thursday and told the boards to maintain that state of readiness that they had really uh, somewhat miraculously achieved. And so if that was the case, then we would have a complete election on May 3rd. Of course, there's a chance that the court doesn't do that. And then at that point, I'm going to tell the boards of elections that we have to conduct an election on May 3rd, because that's what the law says. But it has to be without state legislative races or out state, without state central committee races. And of course, uh, the, 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 the time that it will take the boards of elections to do that is over the next week and a half or so. But in that scenario, we'll be ready for early voting to begin on April 5th, which is the first day of early voting. And we'll be ready a day or two before that to start sending out overseas and military ballots as well. Now, there's also the possibility that the court steps in and moves the date of the election. If they did that, I would... I would probably suspect that they would move it to a date in late June. Uh, and at that point, the federal court, again, because they're the only court that could move the election would be the federal court, uh, that the court may also uh, want to engage in their own map drawing process, which again, the federal court has the ability to do, the Ohio Supreme Court does not. Uh, the next option that could arise is that the state legislature could vote to move the date of the primary. Now that would take a super majority vote, meaning it would take both Republicans and Democrats to do, because in order for it to take effect within 90 days, it requires a thing called an emergency clause, meaning it takes more reps and more senators to pass it. Um, and if that were the case, I would suspect that they would move the election uh, to maybe sometime in late June. Uh, so any one of these different scenarios could come to pass and, um, and we're gonna be ready for each one of them at the boards of elections. I don't know. I'm not sure if you can touch on this or answer this, but the lo the longer we wait until we have a primary election, if, if it's pushed back, uh, there are a lot of contentious races and they're very expensive here in the state of Ohio right now. Have you heard any feedback from any of the uh, people who are running about what is happening and what's another six weeks of advertisements uh, going to cost them? And um, I guess like the even the mental strain, it's not easy to run for office, as you know, I'm sure. For. Well, maybe that's only good for the revenues at the local TV stations. I but, uh, <laughs> you know, I, I'll say that, listen, there are a whole lot of reasons why you don't want to have an election date get moved by the court, by the General Assembly, uh, or, or by anyone else for that matter. There are a whole lot of reasons why that is disruptive. And you named uh, just one there. It's hard for candidates that build their budgets, uh, build their plans, 
uh, based on election day being a predictable day, but it's also challenging for our school districts. Many school districts, I think there's over 80 school districts that have levies that are set to be on the May 3rd ballot. And um, those levies help inform the decisions that the school boards have to make just weeks later when they have to enter into contract negotiations with their teachers unions in June. And they may have to sign contracts with their teachers throughout the month of June. They may not be able to do that if they haven't had their levy yet and known how that levy is going to turn out. So they don't even know how much money they're going to have to work with. It can also impact other taxing districts like a park district or an MRDD district or, uh, you know, any of these other, uh, you know, water and sewer district or whatever else, because they may have a project that they've already secured bonding for. So they've, they've gotten the terms of their loan set, if you will, and it's based on that, that construction project can start if they pass their, their, their levy. Well, at this point, if the election day moves, the terms of those loans might, might change as well. And as you know, interest rates are going up right now because of the massive inflation that we're seeing in this country. And so that could have an impact. Boards of elections. Uh, may have trouble recruiting poll workers in the summer because people are on summer vacation and that kind of thing, or they may even have trouble getting their polling locations in the summer because the church where they have it may have vacation Bible school or the school where they have a polling location may be renovating their gym. So there, there are a whole variety of reasons not to do this. And by the way, this is why it's so unfortunate that these out-of-state activist groups have been pursuing this, uh, this legal strategy of, of trying to get their way in the courts and, and, and compelling the state of Ohio to go through this process over and over again of changing uh, the, the maps and, and redrawing the lines. Okay. Anything else that you would like to add that I may not have asked you? Well, we need poll workers, whether the election is going to be held on May 3rd or sometime in June, we need patriotic men and women from all over the state to sign up. And the place to do that is at voteohio.gov. It's a great experience. You get paid for it. You learn a lot. We've talked about this, Christine, and and, uh, and again, one thing I want to emphasize, regardless of what day the election is going to be held in Ohio, and that choice will be made either by the, the legislature or by the federal court, no matter when the election's held, it's going to be a secure and an accessible process. And that's something that Ohioans can count on because we are the gold standard for elections here in this state. And that's the work of hundreds and hundreds of Republicans and Democrats at each of our 88 boards of elections. All right, Secretary LaRose, thank you so much. For those of you who are watching, we've got all that information linked in the story below. Thank you for watching NBC4i.com for more information. Thank you, as always, Secretary LaRose.